The primaries are over for France's right. It's in battle formation. Centrist Alain Juppé congratulating the resounding winner of uh, those primaries, François Fillon, who won some two-thirds of the vote. His sober demeanor, a definite winner in these times of unsettling change. But will the rest of the electorate go along with his Thatcherite pledge to take an axe to half a million civil service jobs? In a pitch to the working classes, the far right's Marine Le Pen is all for the welfare state, a clean break with the days when her dad ran the National Front. But some of her original grassroots support may be tempted by Catholic conservative Fillon and his stances on gay marriage, abortion, his rejection of a more multicultural Europe. Then there's the left, where the outgoing president uh, cut short by a few hours a summit to Madagascar after his own prime minister hinted he may run against François Hollande. Unprecedented disarray, say some, and it could all come to a head in the hours and days to come. Where will socialist voters turn in a race where they reject the two front runners? Today in the France Venquette debate, does Fillon have the right stuff? With us to talk about it, well, a man who thinks he does, Pierre Danon, spokesperson for the campaign of François Fillon. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks as well to Socialist Party spokesperson Corinne Narasiga. Welcome back. Good evening. And uh, we love visitors at, uh, in the France Venquette debate. Greek economist Yanis Koutsoumidis is not in Hania Crete, but here in Paris. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. The France Venquette debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter at the hashtag F24Debate. The picture much clearer, but only for one side. The right falling in line behind François Fillon. The battle inside the ruling socialists, whose primaries are scheduled for January, playing out at times this Monday inside the confines of the presidential palace. Haxi Myers Belkin has more. On Sunday, François Fillon, the economically liberal and socially conservative former prime minister, became the centre-right's presidential nominee. Up against rival Alain Juppé, Fillon secured 66.5% of votes, a result that the majority of right-wing politicians are happy to get behind. I think what François Fillon offered compared to Alain Juppé was a conservative party that does not apologize for its values and its ideas. What we need now is to come together. Polls now predict that the final round of the presidential election in May will see Fillon up against National Front leader Marine Le Pen. The far-right party has reason to be worried that Fillon's Catholic values and anti-immigrant rhetoric will attract traditional National Front voters. Le Pen's party is now fighting to discredit Fillon's economic plans, notably his desire to shrink the French state. His plan is very harsh. It cannot bring together a majority of French people. The success of a man known as the French Thatcher has also galvanized many socialists into calling for party unity. On Monday, government spokesman Stéphane Le Foll insisted that President François Hollande and Prime Minister Manuel Valls would not be competing against each other in January's left-wing primary. I want for us to come together. Not for us, but to try to carry out a project that protects those that now might, quite rightly, feel threatened by François Fillon's proposals. Fillon has promised to cut half a million civil service jobs over the next five years and wants to increase working hours across the board. For France, radical proposals that will be put to the test on the 23rd of April. Uh, let me begin, Pierre Danon, by, by saying nobody around this table is going to contest that François Fillon ran a great campaign. After all, he wins two-thirds of the vote in the runoff. He surges ahead of, uh, of everyone, including his former boss, the former president, uh, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy. Great primary campaign, but now can he build a big tent, which is what you need uh, if you're going to win a general election, with his plans to slash public spending, most notably, isn't that going to be a red flag to a bull to many French people? Yeah. Uh, first of all, you have to know that in France, we, we, our public spending is 57% of the GDP. In the average of European Union, is 50%. And the Germans are quite near 45%. So what François Fillon wants is just to get back where a lot of other people are, which means actually cutting 100 uh, billion euros, uh, which means 
leaving the public spend flat over the next five years, because that's what it means, cutting um, 100 billion against the trend. So it's, uh, it's needed, it's very important to do, because if we have too heavy public spending, we have taxes and we have debt. And debt is really a problem for France, and taxes are now a heavy burden on our companies, and it's a handicap to our competitivity. So it's a very much needed reform. Needed medicine, you say, but will the French go along with it? Uh, they like their welfare state. Yeah, you know, th there is a lot of pedagogy needed uh, when you want to reform France. François Fillon is doing that since three years. Uh, when he started to say that we wanted to, uh, he wanted to uh, push the retirement age at 65, let me remind you that in Germany it's 67, and in the UK also 67, we are at 62, he said that he wanted to push it to 65. Three years ago it looked like lunatic in France and, and very aggressive. Now I think that with explanation, pedagogy, talking to the people, which we have done a lot, it starts to be accepted. So that's, that's what we are trying to do with him, is explain to the people why it's needed. He wrote a book, I think it was 10 years ago, saying that the French people can bear the truth. That is the big criticism that's leveled against both candidates in the 2012 election. Neither of them confronted the size of the problem. François Hollande will recall on the campaign trail, mm -hmm. uh, ran a very left-wing campaign, uh, complained about finance, about banks. But then he, he did reform, but he didn't do what he promised as a, as think, a candidate. I think if you look back, at, and I'm sure we'll have uh, many opportunities in the next few weeks, in the next couple of months, to discuss uh, what we've done since, since 2012. And if you really look at what François Hollande promised, uh, we, we did um, put regulations in place for the financial sector. The idea was never to say that fin finance is bad in general. We need a financing we always, system. We all remember that, we that need million to dollar, right that, we, in, that million euro tax uh, at the beginning of the mandate. That yes, it was it was done and it was it was taken down by the, the uh, constitutional hmm. uh, uh, council. Uh, but we did create a new uh, higher tax bracket for the the, the highest revenues. Uh, we did do that, and we did put regulations in place in the banking system. We did push the, the, the regulations at the European level, uh, and we can always say it wasn't enough, but uh, what we needed was to put in check a very speculative uh, finance and put the finances, uh, financing system back in service of the actual productive economy. Um, and we... Today, we can start to see the results of the, of the economic policy. François Hollande, in 2012, ran first and foremost on, on uh, putting France back on the right track in, when it comes to the economy while protecting the social system. And this is this, this very difficult balance that we've achieved. Um, we've, had, we've had some misses, it's true, uh, but we've also had a lot of success. And, uh, but there's still, as, as, as Pierre Danon was saying, the uh, heavy public debt and also, of course, the unemployment rate, which is... Yes, uh, but uh, we've, we've uh, uh, put the, 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 the debt increase in check and we've reduced the deficit very significantly. And we've done that while over the last couple of years redistributing by cutting taxes on the lower, uh, lower classes. Uh, and uh, we've strengthened our social system. We've put in more rights. We've increased a lot of the, the, the minimum uh, um, uh, social um, uh, subventions uh, and subsidies. Su subsidies. Yes, exactly. Uh, and um, and we've created new rights, especially in the healthcare system. Yeah, Yanis Kutsumidis, it's all about perception, isn't it, an election? And uh, what's your perception, seen from the outside? Were you surprised to see that the front runner was a man? promising to slash half a million jobs, something that is unpopular among some, even within the right. Absolutely. But I think uh, the, the French uh, right-wing voters decided to go for a man who showed leadership. Fillon showed leadership in the last few weeks, and he was quite convincing in the debates, especially in the TV debates, that he can lead this country in a more prosperous times. Because what uh, Mr. Hollande failed is to show leadership also for Europe. 
and I think Mr. Fillon has a great opportunity to win in April. So when you say show leadership, do you mean uh, with his policies or with his demeanor, the way with, he presents himself? I think, I think both. France needs more open market uh, policies to uh, regain its strength and its growth and become a steam uh, in, in uh, the Eurozone again. And on the other hand, people in France, I feel that they need to feel more secure in uh, regards to terrorism and in, uh, internal security. On the other hand, the very sensitive issues of uh, religion, identity, this will be debated a lot, and I think Mr. Hollande has an issue there to say that uh, it is uh, an open society. France has always been an open society and should not be a closed society. So we see, I see, my opinion is there are good uh, good plans by Mr. Fillon to revive the French economy, but there's many debatable issues for his identity and national policies. A little more than four million voted uh, in the primaries of the center and the right. That's a little more than 11 percent of those who cast ballots in the last presidential election in 2012. After he won Sunday, François Fillon addressed, well, the other 90 percent of the French. The left means failure. The far right, bankruptcy. What I'm talking about is beating these political parties, not beating those French people who feel let down, all those voters who may not stand with us today, but it is my duty to bring them with us into the future. Bring them with us uh, into the future. People right now are afraid of the future, and they're afraid of uh, what they see in the world around them. They're afraid of globalization. and. What we're hearing from the candidate Fillon is things like scrapping the wealth tax, uh, trickle-down economics to a certain degree. How are you going to win over all those voters who come from working class and middle class backgrounds, the ones from those lower middle class backgrounds who will decide the election? But, you know, the, the, the center, and you mentioned it a couple of times, so I have to insist on it, the, the center of François Fillon's program is to defeat unemployment, which Germany and the UK have succeeded to do because they are at 5% and we are at 11%. And we are at 11% since like 30 years. So one of the key elements to defeat employment is to attract investment. You know, in order to have a production economy, you need to have manpower and workforce, but you also need to have capital. And in France, we have so much smashed and pointed to our investors that we don't have investors. In That's France, you have eight, I did not interrupt you, so let me please finish and then you, you uh, will be very happy to listen to you. Uh, we have 8,000 business angels in France. There are 80,000 business angels in the UK, which means people investing in small businesses, starting and growing small businesses. That's how you create employment. So I don't think that people mind too much about the few thousand people who are paying wealth tax as long as we create employment and growth, because that's good for everybody. Corinne Rassigan? Um, we do have a problem of investment in France, mostly because the French banks don't really do their job really well when it comes to uh, investing in the actual productive economy, which is why the first measure that Francois Hollande campaigned on, and, and uh, it was the number one on his, in his uh, proposals, and the, one of the first things he did was create the the public investment bank, because we understand that there is a problem there. But France is actually one of the countries that attracts the most foreign investments in Europe. Uh, so even though we do, it's true that we do have to do even better, we're not doing so badly today. Uh, and um, I think um, France also is a country where the republic was built on the social contract. And the fact that the state has a very strong responsibility to ensure uh, equality, to ensure equal opportunities for all. And this is why French people, most French people um, understand the need for uh, very strong public services, which means that you know, a little bit of a higher taxes, but because it's always the choice. You can choose choose to pay less taxes, but you will have less social services, less public services. Uh, you can make a choice for uh, uh, the, the, the kind of job market that you have in the UK or in Germany, but that means uh, lower lower paying jobs, uh, with partial um, partial time jobs, and this is this is a political choice. It is a very political choice that we want to have good jobs 
full-time jobs uh, for, for the French. When there were uh, when there were labor reforms put in by the, by, the, by, the, by the current government, even though some of the unions signed on, there were still hundreds of thousands of people in the streets. Yeah, let, let me first uh, uh, answer, uh, Madame. Uh, in, Fran in, in France, we have 90 civil servants for 1,000 citizens. In Germany, they have 50 civil servants for 1,000 citizens. So the difference is 1.6 million civil servants that we have in addition to what the German had. I travel a lot to Germany. I have not noticed that German people were especially unhappy about their public administration. So that's one thing. We, we really believe that people are tired about listening to always the same kind of uh, language where 6 million people today in France are looking for a job. Six million people. Tony Blair was saying that what is social is what gives people jobs. That's what matters. But now, in just answering your, your question, uh, it is true that there have been a lot of people in the street for in the summer. Uh, first of all, we really believe that François Hollande had it all wrong in the way he, he dealt with, uh, with that law. And that was what attracted a lot of demonstration. May I remind you that in France, when François Fillon did reform the retirement system in 2010 and in 2003, there were millions of people in the street. And nonetheless, the reform went through. And we still have those reforms. If we would not have those reforms, the retirement system in France would be collapsing. Yanis, let me just get your reaction to begin about uh, when you look at the conversation in France, obviously uh, in Greece it's completely different uh, from, from, from what it is here. W what are your thoughts? Did I get back to that original question that, that we asked, which was, uh, did François Fillon run a great primary campaign but not so good in a, in a general election? Yes, well, uh, the, the primaries were followed closely by Greek media, and I think the Greek public were uh, impressed by the quality of the discussion. I think it was a good uh, result for the Greek, uh, for the French democracy in general, because it was very different from what we saw in the States. The States were exchange of insults, and in France was real uh, political discussion. So I hope that it stays on in, in, the, in the election as well, because France needs to lead in a political sense Europe as well. But what the, the leader, the new president of France should uh, present is a new social contract that will combine a free market economy and a social contract for the poor. So we have an acceptance by the, the majority of the society to accept this harsh uh, austerity measures that I believe are needed for the French economy to withstand the tax wars that will come next year, probably by the UK, which will slash down its corporate tax rate and also by other countries. So France needs to be prepared to join this arena of uh, lower taxes and be prepared to become also competitive in the Eurozone again. All right, a tax war is, is, is what you're saying. Uh, Greece, obviously, with the huge recession that you have, we can even call it, I suppose, a depression uh, in Greece, was the first to see uh, a real shakeup of the old political order. Uh, in your case, it was uh, the far left uh, that came to power with Syriza. Uh, when you have a look now that uh, all, everything that's happening, uh, Brexit in, in June, you mentioned it, the election of Donald Trump. We have uh, the election coming up this weekend in Austria of the president, the referendum in Italy, uh, and then uh, Dutch elections. I'm seeing the far right leader, uh, Gert Wilders, who uh, uh, is ahead in the polls, the latest polls we saw uh, this Monday. This blowback against globalization, uh, you're saying it's now going to lead to a tax war. Yes, because uh, the, the British Prime Minister, uh, Ms. May, said she's going to slash the corporate tax to become more competitive uh, after Brexit. So we're going to see lower uh, tax rates in, in uh, the outside of uh, Europe. So Europe needs to be more competitive. The German government has announced it will also have tax cuts for 2017. The German budget passed last week and it has lower taxes. So France needs to follow with lower taxes as well to stay competitive. We've been uh, lowering taxes on 
on uh, the in, in revenue on the lo the lower classes already, and we've also done so for uh, uh, businesses, uh, which which caused some criticism on on our left. Uh, so, I think we're we're doing. But when you see the news out of Britain, what, what was it? They're talking about a fifteen. What is it? Fifteen, even twelve percent in some instances. Yes, they're hinting think, at a twelve percent corporate tax rate. I think. I think then the question is how Europe will react because we need to react in a united way, and we and we also need to have strong European leadership in general, not just uh, for all the countries of solidarity between all the countries within Europe, uh, but also because we don't know what Trump's policy will be. Uh, internationally, uh, and we need Europe to be strong because of the uncertainty that we have now with the American uh, positions. And so I'm not sure uh, François Fillon, with his Eurosceptic skeptics view and his pro-Russian stance, is a good is a good option for France and for Europe today. Um, and uh, when it comes to what you said about austerity, I think I think the problem is uh, we've seen. In, including in Greece, that when you have an, an austerity policy, that uh, you increase inequalities right away and you cause a, a recession, at least in the short term. And we know from the, the, the policies that were uh, deployed by Margaret Thatcher and by Ronald Reagan, then that the trickle-down economics logic actually increases inequality. So um, I really don't see when François Fillon speaks about pretty much privatizing social security. Uh, I don't think this is something that French people want, and I don't think this is strengthening the social contract I and think, protecting, the, pr protecting the weakest. This is why I mentioned the social contract, like a new deal uh, for France, to show to the people that lower taxes can create jobs and create wealth and create also security for the jobs that are now in danger. On the other hand, if you have just uh, cut jobs and austerity, then of course there will be uprising and people on the streets demonstrating. This is what the new president, if it's Mr. Fillon yeah. or whoever, this that is may not be. what Mr. Fillon is running on, unfortunately. Pierre, Pierre well, Danon, will it be will it be every country for itself, under under a, an eventual president Fillon, or do you agree with Corinne Narasigan? There needs to be a Europe-wide response to to the tax breaks that might come from Britons, for okay, instance. So step by step. First of all, that's a kind of really. Uh, things that are uh, really uh, not true. Uh, François Fillon is, of course, not planning to privatize social security. This is almost laughable as, as a statement. This is He's just saying. saying that some of the comfort medicine needs to be carried by private insurance. But when you hear Yanis so, talk about and, and this, this tax war, how will he just respond one second, to that? Just one second, because we, we need to, 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 to explain sure. to your uh, viewers. And, uh, and we think, he thinks, that that's the only way to save the financial health system is to be reasonable on some of the spending in order to protect what is very, very important. So that's one thing. In terms of François Fillon is not a Eurosceptic at all, not at all. What François Fillon is saying is that the way it has been built since now 50 years with this notion of federalism, ever increasing federalism, is dead. It doesn't mean that Europe is dead. It means that the way we are building Europe has to change. We are listening to the UK people. We are listening to the Dutch people. If we don't listen to the people, we will take Europe to his tomb. And what he wants okay, is so let to, me, so to me refund Europe, a strong Europe, on fewer priorities, including currency and therefore including fiscal uh, convergence, means having the tax rate converging to a reasonable level. Of course, we'll probably ask the Irish people who are at 12% to do an effort, but we are at 33%. We are the total outlier in terms of taxes. We have to bring our taxes down also. And the only way to so do that is to So you're for tax harmonization, tax harmonization, yes. but at a lower level, is what you're saying? Yes, of course. Okay. Of course. Now, uh, we're going to talk about the left, because there's been a soap opera playing out at the presidential palace. The president and his prime minister, they held their usual Monday lunch, it happens every week, but if you believe the press, it almost didn't happen. The interior minister's name uh, was even floated as François Hollande's uh, reported choice uh, to replace Manuel Valls, this over the pr current prime minister's uh, interview in a Sunday paper where he pondered running against the boss. Charles Pellegrin has more. 
Don't be fooled by the handshake. Manuel Valls is slowly launching a campaign to distance himself from President François Hollande. The Prime Minister claims he's getting ready in newspaper Le Journal du Dimanche, ready for the socialist primaries, ready to give hope, in his own words, to his party. Another way of saying he's seriously considering running to be the Socialist Party's candidate in the presidential election and attempting to stop the president from running for a second term. His main argument for that is the release of a controversial book that displayed conversations the president had with two journalists. He said this caused a deep sense of helplessness within the French left. Manuel Valls believes that Hollande should never have confided so much. The Prime Minister dodged the question of his possible candidacy, saying he will take his decision in good conscience and reaffirming his sense of duty to the French state. Yes. A few days earlier, he couldn't help but chuckle as he avoided a similar query. I'm tempted, but I won't give in to answering your question here. But I'll think about it. Only a few months ago, Valls declared he didn't like the idea of a socialist primary. Clearly, he's changed his mind. Colleen Narasigan, the Prime Minister's office, putting out a statement saying he's not resigning. Mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty extraordinary, isn't it, when you think about it, the way th this, this is all unfolded. Well, he had, he had to put an end to the rumors. Um, but, um, but I mean, a I Prime Minister doubting his president in a newspaper I interview, is, I and think there is there is there's been questions uh, on the left for a while. What happens if François Hollande decides not to run? Who do we have to run uh, in the primaries to to uphold the, the line that we've? But the, the, the reasoning line. being, especially um, after the victory so, of the right, is yes. that time is now running short. Those First, primaries are in January. Yes, and should we'll François know, Hollande, for the we'll, peace of mind of his own party, announce? This well, week, we'll, now, his, we'll, his candidacy. We'll know very soon. We'll know in the next few days anyway, because the, because, uh, the candidacies have to be put in between December 1st and December 15th. So I'm guessing probably by next week we'll, we'll know. Um, and, uh, and I think uh, everybody, the cooler heads must prevail. <laughs> I think everybody needs to put their ingos in, in check, because the right uh, electorate, has, as they've shown by massive uh, participation in the in the primary, which is a good a good good news for democracy, um, that they they will be united behind François Fillon. There there is a dynamic there uh, on the right, and f facing that, the left has to be responsible. Whether they are candidates within the primaries, or the ones who very irresponsibly, in my in in, in my way of thinking, are are candidates outside of the primaries because. We need a united left if we want to pass the first round of the presidential election, if we don't want to have France choose between François Fillon and Marine Le Pen in the second round of the presidential election. And so when it so comes far, to nobody inside the Socialist Party is, is nobody said the that they're going party, rogue on that score. Yes, and no, nobody in the Socialist Party uh, is talking about running outside the primaries, and nobody in the Socialist Party, actually, we, we've had a, a discussion at the, the Bureau National, National, uh, the, National Bureau, uh, the, yes, um, uh, today, uh, we, Monsieur primaries? Macron is not a socialist, he said it himself, uh, and, um, and but that's interesting because Yanis Koutsoumidis, for in his mind and in a lot of French voters' minds, no, Macron, even though he's think, not inside the party, maybe outside of France, but I don't think in France no, nobody believes that Mr. Macron is a socialist. Um, but um, I think nobody in the in the socialist party wants to see a competition between the president and the prime minister within the primaries. So the, the logic is, François Hollande must make a decision, and when he has made his decision, either he runs. And uh, this will we will know the, then who all, all the candidates are, and if he doesn't, is he going to wait till the last possible minute run, till December fifteenth? If you're saying no, no, I think he, he knows that, especially because uh, there's a lot of uh, questions about that. That we we need to have a, a decision uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, and so when if, sooner? Is it this week? I, I can't tell you because that's his decision, um, but I'm, I'm guessing most likely next week. All right, an online poll for Harris Interactive without Valls in the running uh, puts the outgoing president in fifth place.
Uh, there you see Francois Hollande's number is actually below the unemployment figure right now. Uh, Francois Fillon uh, tops ahead of uh, the far-right candidate Marine Le Pen. Emmanuel Macron, we were talking about him a moment ago, the former economy minister um, who's making a way for himself in the center of the field, slightly ahead of the far-left candidate who's just gotten the endorsement of the communist. The last one you see on that list, uh, uh, Francois Bayrou, was the centrist candidate in 2000. And 12, uh, he hasn't announced whether or not he, whether or not he's going to run. Is, is is Francois Fillon going to be able to, uh, by the way, uh, court those centrist voters who might be willing to vote for Francois Bayrou? Yanis Koutsoumidis was saying that Fillon's going to have a problem when it comes to values because his values are not that of many French citizens uh, towards the centers. First of all, I'm very happy that you raised the point because you, you mentioned probably by accident that uh, uh, Francois Fillon had a uh, was against abortion and uh, against uh, gay marriage. This is wrong. Uh, he, is, he, he, will, he has said on record that he will never touch. Uh, he says he won't abortion. overturn them. No, he will not. But that he it, personally was against. But that's his right. That's right. his. Uh, if we, we are a free country and people can think what they want, but he has already said on record several times that he would not touch it. He is not. Uh, planning to touch again uh, the gay marriage. He's just planning to touch the adoption rules, which we can discuss about. So I, I think that there is a lot of overheat about that. And we, we have, I mean, we've played the campaign speeches of him saying, yes. for instance, the, the, how good colonialism the, uh, ha, has been. And, uh, that, 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 no. A that, cultural that, exchange is what no, he said. No, that, Those that, were his words. That's not what he said. We could touch on that also. We were on values. I'm just saying that the values that he's displaying and that he's after, we think that can easily bring the center of, uh, with us. And by the way, most of the center has already joined Francois Fillon. Most of the leaders have joined and supported Francois Fillon. So you will have center and right very much united. Remains Francois Bayrou, time will tell. But one thing is sure, is that Francois Fillon will not negotiate his program in exchange on having the center the rest of the center come to him. We, he thinks that his program is the only one who can uh, redress France and get us back on the right trajectory. So he has very clearly said that he will not negotiate the program. But let's say 90% of the center is already aligned behind Francois Fillon and, and with joy. So I don't think that, that that will be a major problem anyway. In 2002, we already had the scenario where it was the right candidate, Jacques Chirac, against a far-right candidate, mm -hmm. the, the, the father of uh, Marine Le Pen, Jean-Marie Le Pen at the time. And the left came out and voted en masse uh, yes. for Jacques Chirac. Uh, this time around, if it's the same scenario as the polls suggest, will you, Corinne Narasiguin, personally vote for François Fillon? Uh, my personal choice is that we find a way so that we, I don't have to make that choice, I, obviously. I, I understand. Uh, but, but, um, but will the French left stay I, home I, that day or will they vote? I don't know. I can't tell you. I, I, will, I will definitely uh, vote against Marine Le Pen every time. There is no question for me because I think, uh, besides the fact that I disagree with Francois Fillon about everything, I do believe that he's someone who... Uh, is a, a full Republican and who, who upholds the values of the Republic, which is not the case in democracy and, and the Republican, which is not the case of Marine Le Pen. And uh, I, I cannot uh, just stand by and, and let Marine Le Pen and, and her ideas become what France is in the eyes of the world, and it will, it will have dire consequences on the French people. Uh, but I'm not sure that the the Republican front, as we call it, would actually hold with François Fillon because because of his positions on identity, of a very monolith monolithic view of what French citizenship is, uh, on uh, issues of women's rights and, and, and uh, uh, LGBT rights, because if he did see, say that he would not overturn abortion, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, he would be very progressive when it comes to the fact that we voted uh, for uh, um, uh, free access to abortion for everyone. The fact that we modified the laws on, on abortion, so he could still he could still you know reverse some things without completely overturning the right. And the, and the question of adoption, I think it's it's a is a, a, a way of maintaining this 
uh, ideas that uh, homosexual parents cannot ever be real parents, and that's that's a big issue uh, that, no, that we have true? to. This, it's true. It's no. it is exactly no. what is, the position is. He's in because favor of uh, homosexual no. parents adopting. He has no problem with no, that, no, and no, he has because said it. But he, the, the, no, because his it's only mix. problem is that he doesn't want that this adoption erase biological parents. Yeah, but the, 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 the question of access to the question of access to origins is a real serious question that needs to be addressed. But it needs That's to be addressed that. also for heterosexual parents who adopt the same way, because you're also erasing the true history of people. And so the question of access to origin can be discussed, but it cannot be discussed based on the social, social uh, sexual orientation of the parents. Lots of reactions on the hashtag F24 debate. We'll read just one for you. Fillon has a better chance of defeating Le Pen than Juppé, and definitely a socialist candidate. Before we go, Yanis Koutsoumidis. Uh, it's um, somebody who is a staunch conservative um, and who's tacking to the right, who's going to be the standard bearer uh, for uh, the center and the right in France. Um, I've heard it said that um, it's not a year to be a centrist in any case. What's your, what, what are your thoughts in terms of that when you look at France? Yes, we see on, not only in France, in other countries as well, the centrist politics are on defensive now. And I think there needs to be a new, uh, a new agenda, a new narrative from the centrist parties to address the issues of security, social rights and uh, also the more competitive economy. Uh, unfortunately, there has been this move of populist uh, movements all around the world, I would say, the, the US, uh, other countries as well. And, and can those and, centrists, and can those people who believe in the European project and who believe in, you know, center left and center right, yes. can they can they come back? They can come back, but they have to be ahead of the curve. And when I say ahead of the curve, they have to address the fears and anxieties of the people, not with populist proposals, but realistic and achievable proposals. And this is what the centrist parties in many countries have failed to do. We need to tackle security, we need to tackle higher growth, and we need to tackle also the fear of the people that globalism is going to take away their jobs. So there needs to be a social contract on one hand and more competitive social, uh, economy on the other side. This is what the centrist uh, politicians can achieve in many countries. Yanis Koutsoumidis, thank you for joining us in Paris. I want to thank Pierre Danon. I want to thank Corinne Narasigan. Stay with us a little bit longer because our Media Watch segment is next. And we say hello to Emma James. Hi there. Uh, you've been taking a look at uh, how this resounding win by uh, François Fillon on the runoff is, is playing out. Yes, a lot less surprise out there this time around because, of course, the week before it was a great shock. Uh, no one was really predicting that he would win by that kind of margin. It was 44 percent in the first round. Yes, um, but it did seem to be fairly accurately predicted that he would be as far out in front in the second round. Um, taking a look now at the cartoonists wondering what kind of uh, president Francois Fillon could make, and, of course, tying this in with the death of Fidel Castro this weekend, um, it says it's Fillon who will lead the conservative revolution, and in Spanish it says, ever onward to victory. Lots of eyebrow jokes, I've noticed. I know. I, he can't get away from the <laughs> eyebrow jokes. I feel quite sorry for him, really. Because um, short of getting them all plucked off, there's not much he can do. Uh, <laughs> this is actually an old uh, cartoon that was first drawn when he was the French Prime Minister. And what it says is, um, soon the retirement age will be 70 years. And in France, there's a saying, metro, boulot, dodo, which means uh, you take your train to work, you work and then you go to bed and that is your life. Um, and this obviously says uh, metro, work and then the crypt, um, pointing out that if the uh, retirement age is raised to 70, that's pretty late on in life. Um, another cartoonist here, instead of dancing with the stars, we have dance with a czar. Uh, a nod, of course, to the much publicised and much... Ah, uh, we didn't have time to talk about it. <laughs> You're off the hook this time. Yeah, <laughs> Pro-Russian uh, feelings, if you like, uh, proclivities of uh, Francois Fillon. Um, and that is something that a lot of people have been talking about. Um, if we take a look at this article, which is from a British uh, weekly, The Spectator, which is very much a conservative magazine. They have posted this one on their website, uh, written by Gavin Mortimer, who is a British man who lives here in Paris. Uh, and he says there was too much complacency in the Juppé camp. They had sat back and thought, 
because up until just a few weeks ago, he looked very comfortably like he had an unassailable lead. Um, he prattled on about happy identity, says the writer, seeming oblivious to the reality of life today for all but the gilded elite. Now, he goes on to say that Fillon travelled the country, tapped into the real concerns of the French people over Islam and the economy. But he also points out that the CGT union, which was behind many of those protests that we saw uh, earlier this year against reforms to employment law here in France, have already been talking about the fact that they say mobilisation will be on the agenda if we get Fillon as president next year. Um, he also when you say mobilisation, you mean strike be actions, streets, industrial actions? Yes, because action. he's talking about huge um, cuts mm. and also 500,000 cuts uh, mm. in the private, in the public sector, sorry, um, 500,000 job cuts. That, those are big, swinging changes. And, and France, traditionally, is not a country that likes to see that level of reform that quickly. Um, and they have already said that much as many people were predicting that if Fion gets into power, this is probably going to be the case. Um, he also talks about the fact that the National Front can benefit by playing on the fact that Fion is seen as posh and privileged. Uh, looking at the Huffington Post French edition, they point out another potential challenge for Francois Fion. They talk about um, an ambush by those who didn't vote in the primary. Can they block Fion in 2017? It's a loud um, headline. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, what they say is that the Conservatives seem to have forgotten that it's only 10% of the electorate who actually went out and voted this Sunday. Uh, so their candidate is not a shoo in by any stretch of the imagination. And they also point that point out that the old and rich have been overrepresented while the youth and working class were absent. Something echoed in this particular tweet here. Uh, Fion's supporters are retired and benefited from secure job contracts, social security, retirement at 60, and now they want to destroy it all. Interestingly as well, over the weekend, a lot of people were using this hashtag, which was, I won't vote for Fion because. And lots of different reasons given, but lots of people talking about... Uh, this one says, uh, vive le Moyen-Âge, which means uh, long live the Middle Ages, pointing to the fact that really they see Fionn as someone who harks back to the past. All right, so a celebration now, but um, a long campaign still to come. Long way to go. For both sides. I want to thank our panel once again. Thank you for joining us here in the France Vingt Get Debate.